Magnesium silicate. Do you go swimming? <laughs> I really enjoy being a STEM Act ambassador because I get to inspire children. It helps me to understand how children view the world. I view it from one perspective, but their perspective is completely different. You can sometimes be set in your own bubble and by coming out of that bubble, it readjusts your thinking. My name is Dr. Marcia Philbin. I work for DSTL, which stands for Defence Science and Technology Laboratories. At DSTL, we solve problems by using science and technology. I joined DSTL in 2009 and I saw a brochure advertising for STEMnet ambassadors and it was something I was always interested in. I wanted to go in and inspire children, particularly children from my kind of background, to think about science as a career. My first STEMnet activity was at a primary school and it was quite scary because I didn't really know what I should be doing. But what helped was um, at the same time, the Royal Society of Chemistry, of which I am a member, had produced some resources about chemistry and food. And so that's when I came across red cabbage indicator, racing raisins, um, building structures using American gum, <laughs> and things like that. And so because those resources were readily available, that helped guide me and provide me with a framework to use. Well, when I show an interest in an activity, I contact the person at STEMnet about it. They then put me in contact with the teacher. The teacher will inform me of what their expectations are and what the children might be interested in and what they might be expecting. And so between us, we work out an appropriate activity. If you could tell me a bit about your background and then we can work out mm -hmm. what topic we can slot you into. Well, I'm a chemist by training. I've got a degree and PhD um, in chemistry and I've worked for the Ministry of Defence and the various agencies for a number of years. I asked the teacher about the space, the age of the children, the available resources, and that gives me an idea of what I'm working with. Now it's a double lesson, yeah. so I start at 10 to 9 and doesn't yeah. finish until 10.30, yeah. but obviously you'd probably want to come and get set up and everything. I would definitely need a teacher and perhaps a technician to okay. help with, help uh, arrange yeah. things. Well it's my group, so I'll yeah. definitely be there the yeah. whole time anyway, yeah. and especially for, for practical work, you know, yeah. it's good to have as many yeah. adults in the room as possible. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. When, when I um, ask the teachers about um, where the children are in the curriculum and, and their ability, that will help me to gauge um, how much detail to go into with the activity. So it comes from primary? Yeah, okay. but right. yeah. at my first lesson with them, I asked them, what would you like to do in science? And yeah. all of them said, explored things, <laughs> see explosions. So the fact that you can do something to do with explosions will go down really well. well. <laughs> Is that um, health and safety? Health and safety. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about doing a presentation is to know your audience. If you know your audience and you speak appropriately to them. We've got the canisters. Yeah. Check. We've got acid. Yep. Bicarbonate solution. Bicarbonate of soda is a powder. Yeah. The first time I went in to a school for my first STEMnet activity, it wasn't actually in a classroom, it was in a big hall. And that was even more daunting because there were going to be lots of children. And so I had to think about the layout. And that was a, that's the first time I realised, actually, it's not just a case of going into school. You've got to think about the space that you're going to be using. And there wasn't any running water, and I needed running water, and so I had to ask them to provide me with buckets. And so there's a lot of logistics which I hadn't um, thought about. in, and then you invert it when they're outside, not uh, beforehand. Okay. That's a cute thing. Yeah. But I made it work, and I made it work because I worked with the teacher and I worked with the assistants, and the children were none the wiser. Morning. Morning. 
can you get your stuff out for me? Yeah, plastic bottle. I hope the girls will find um, my journey from my education in my career inspiring. I hope that they will see that if I can do it, then they can do it. If we do this activity, if we try and launch a rocket and it doesn't work, then there's nothing wrong with that. Because the question we need to ask, why didn't it work? And if it doesn't work, we find out why, we understand why it didn't work, and so we know what to do next time. So I hope they get the urge to try things and not be afraid. You can tell we're very excited already, and you should be, because today we have got Dr. Marcia Philbin in. Now, I'm not going to say any more than that, and I'm going to hand over oh. to Marcia. <laughs> When I first meet the children, I smile. And I smile because that helps to disarm them and help break down barriers. Also, um, before I start a presentation, I invite them to ask questions. Because sometimes, if you don't do that, they might be thinking, oh, I can't say anything. And I want you to listen carefully. I want you to tell me the difference between the two sounds. So the first one. When I'm giving a presentation, I think it's really important to involve children because children do have a short attention span. And even though I'm only speaking for 15, 20 minutes, unless you've engaged them, their minds are going to wander. So one way that um, I engage them is to ask some questions. Right, who thinks one on the left gives the most protection? Also ask them um, to solve a problem and, and they like that as well. So. Think of something that you can do to engage them. Final question. If there were no scientists, engineers or mathematicians, would we have the life that we have in the 21st century? I've just started using the STEMnet um, ambassadors this year and I've used um, obviously the lesson with Marcia. I've also had um, a couple of ambassadors come in to do an assembly to the year nines and I've got a couple of ambassadors which are working regularly with me with my after school crest club and all the feedback I'm getting from students is do you know how much they are um, engaged in it and it's good for them to realise the scientists are not necessarily, you know, old men with crazy grey hair. And especially when we get inspirational women scientists in, being a girls' school, I think that's really important, you know, to, to encourage more of our students to go into STEM-based careers. Yeah. Um, so, we've got some milk here. And then we put a bit of washing up liquid on, just a drop. And you know what, I've done this the wrong way around. <laughs> so this is live prop. Right, let me start again. Right. Magic milk is a nice, simple experiment. Um, milk contains fats. And you've got whole milk, semi-skim milk, and skim milk, so you've got different amounts of fats. If you put washing up liquid, which is a detergent, with the milk, that disrupts the um, fat, and the fat moves around a lot. And so you can demonstrate that visually by using food dye. You see, you see it's moving around. And what happens usually is that it continues swirling around and around and around. So it's a really nice experiment and uh, children really like that one. Our last activity, because I think we've got 45 minutes. Are you going to make and design your rockets now? Yeah? yeah? Okay. Doing an activity, for example, like launching rockets is a, is a great one because it's taking the children out of their familiar environment and they do really get excited about things like that. Um, the big challenge with that one is keeping that con excitement contained, <laughs> keeping them under control and keeping them all together because they can get really excitable and that's where you really need a teacher who's got very good classroom control skills because as a STEMnet ambassador, I don't believe that's my role. I'm there to deliver the activity, but I expect the teacher to manage the children. Right, if your rocket's ready, do you want to come over to get the first part of your rocket fuel? I think one of the positive things about being a STEMnet ambassador is that it takes me out of my work environment and helps reconnect me with children in local communities. Professionally, I've had commendations and for being a STEMnet ambassador.
I was actually awarded a certificate by STEMnet two years ago and it, this was recognised by my organisation and it went into the organisational magazine. OK, right, so we're going to go outside and launch our rockets. I use it as part of my continuous professional development in terms of engaging with students and it helps my communication skills, planning, organisation, leading problem-solving skills, and so, yeah, I, I gain an awful lot out of it. Oh, right, we need another one. Yeah, let's put the vinegar, all the vinegar in one. What I would change is spend more time designing the rockets. Also, it occurred to me that I didn't stipulate quantities. In a school with laboratories, I just assumed that there would be lots of acetic acid or vinegar, lots of sodium bicarbonate, and then turn up and you've got these little containers. You make assumptions, and assumptions are a dangerous thing. <laughs> I think my advice to any new ambassadors, wannabe ambassadors, is to go for it. You know, it's not that scary. It might seem daunting at first when you haven't, you know, been used to working with young children, but actually, you know, the, the teachers are always there to support you, so you'll never be left on your own to do things. I think we need to say a big, big thank you to Dr. Philbin for our lesson today. My favourite part was when, the out, when we went outside to try the rockets and when the rocket didn't go up but it just exploded to the side. Yeah, it was really fun because um, it means that we like get a different type of teacher because I really like Miss Smith, but sometimes it's nice to have like a change, so that was nice. It was fun having a different teacher and like sort of another professional to show us what to do and stuff. Someone once said to me um, when I was doing my PhD, he said, um, why are you studying that? Isn't it a waste of time? And it occurred to me that a lot of people out there don't appreciate the importance of science. Right? To them, it's something abstract. It has no impact on their life. And that's why I put in the, in the slide in my presentation everyday things like makeup and a TV and a microwave oven. Without scientists, without people studying scientific disciplines, we wouldn't have a lot of these things. And so trying to connect people, trying to connect our everyday situation with the academic situation. We need people studying these subjects because it does impact on our life.